Today we celebrate the solemnity of the Lord's Ascension. Jesus' return to the Father marks the end of his public ministry and appearance to the disciples after his resurrection. But he really does not leave his disciples. Through his gift of the Holy Spirit, he accompanies them in their task of preaching the good news. Even now, even as they build communities of disciples. Today, we also celebrate the 57th World Communication Sunday, which centers on the theme, Speaking with a Heart, the Truth in Love. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. As a Jesuit, I have lived and worked in many places. I spent two years in Davao as a Jesuit regent teaching, teaching religion, and six months in Iloilo when I was still in formation and I was sent here as a deacon of the parish. And after that, three years in East Timor for my first assignment, and I was given the task of putting up a school running a high school and putting up a teacher training institute. Then after that, I spent a year in the United States for my Jesuit formation, six months in Culion to run our mission school there as the finance officer, and a year and a half in Singapore for further studies in education until I finally came back here and I've been here for four years now. And whenever I would leave these many places behind, I could relate with the Iranian novelist, Izar Nafasi, who described her experience of leaving her hometown with the following words. And I quote, You get a strange feeling when you leave a place, like you'll not only miss the people you love, but you miss the person you are at this time and place, because you'll never be this way ever again. In other words, whenever we say goodbye and move on, we miss two things. First, the people we leave behind, and, that the pers and second, the person that we once were, that we will also leave behind because we will be changed by our experiences. Whenever we say goodbye and move on, our new experiences will definitely change us and hopefully we become better. For example, parents have to go through this what we call the POS, the pain of separation, which today is now also known as SEPAX, separation anxiety. When children grow up and have to leave home to pursue their dreams to begin or to begin their own lives. Parents know it so well. Whenever a child leaves home to go to college or to get married or to work in a different place, they experience a restless heartache that leaves them feeling empty. But after some time, when the child comes back for a visit or when the child often comes home for visits, the pain this slowly disappears because the beloved child is somehow different. You see the same person, but the person is different. Better, 
and more mature perhaps and offers his parents a richer and more mature love and presence than the time when, the, when he or she left home. And this is an example, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, where the pain of losing someone turns into joy of finding something deeper and more meaningful in the person whom we, we thought we had lost. This is perhaps, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, this is perhaps the message that Jesus tries to teach to his disciples as he was preparing them for his ascension into heaven. He was about to leave them and he tells them again and again, it is better for you that I go away. You won't understand this now. You will grieve and have heavy hearts, but later, this will turn to joy and you will understand why I have to do this because unless I go away, I cannot send you my spirit. Unless I go away, I cannot send you my spirit. Today's celebration, the ascension of our Lord, reminds us that we have to learn to accept that at times we have to go away, we have to say goodbye, we have to be separated from each other, we have to be separated even for a moment in order for us to mature, to become better, to be more capable of loving others in a deeper way. Beyond the tensions and irritations, beyond the pain and the suffering that we give each other, and, we, and it, that we cost each other, which will always be found in many relationships. It is better for you that I go away, even if there is sorrow now. If I do not go away, I cannot come back to you in a deeper and better way. Perhaps these are the unspoken words that our loved ones are telling us whenever we have to be separated from them. This is perhaps the message that children are telling their parents whenever they have to leave home to pursue their own lives and their own dreams. I shall return to you, don't worry, and I will be return to you more mature and much better. This perhaps is also the unspoken words that a parent tells his crying child whenever he has to leave him behind at home for work. You will learn, you will learn to live without daddy even for a moment. You will become better because of this separation. This perhaps is also the message that spouses tell each other whenever they separate for a moment to give space to each other or even whenever they, whenever they have to annul their marriage that the space we give each other will make us, will help us rise above the pain that we have caused each other and we can hopefully find a fresh and better way to relate with each other to love it with each other, maybe not as spouses, but at least as friends. This is perhaps also the message that our loved ones tell us whenever we have to surrender them to death. That you, that we, it, it is a, it, it's a message that I am not dead. I continue to live on, but you have to learn to relate with me in a deeper and a more and a, in a different and deeper way. The spiritual writer Ron Rollheiser writes this about the Feast of the Ascension. Sometimes only our absence can deepen and cleanse our presence. Sometimes only our absence can deepen and cleanse our presence. Sometimes it is better that we go away for a day or for a season. That is part of the mystery, the theology, and the psychology of the ascension, says Ron Rollheiser. In other words, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, today's celebration, the ascension of our Lord, reminds us that goodbye somehow changed us. Whenever we say goodbye, 
our new experiences will definitely change us. We somehow become different from the one whom we were in the past. We are hopefully better having grown and matured not only from the experience of separation, of separation itself, but also due to the many experiences that we gain while separated from our loved ones. Before he ascended into heaven, Jesus tells his disciples, It is better that I go away, because unless I go away, I cannot send you my spirit. The ascension of our Lord is about going away so that our loved ones can fully receive our spirit or so that we can fully receive their spirit. It's about the mystery of saying goodbye when goodbye isn't really goodbye at all, but only a temporary separation. It's also love's way of take, taking our relationship to a higher level, to a higher plane, so that love can be present in a way that is deeper, that is purer, and that is more permanent. And so, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we pray for the grace that in Christ's physical absence, may we find His Spirit in the absence of our loved ones May we find their spirit that is deeper and more meaningful, a, a spirit that is a, more deep, is a much deeper and more meaningful presence in our lives. Amen. And finally, for your homework, as I have said earlier from the spiritual writer Ron Rollheiser, who says, Sometimes only our absence can deepen and cleanse our presence. Sometimes only our absence can deepen and cleanse our presence. Sometimes it is better that we go away for a day or for a season. And that is what, what Ron Rollheiser tries to tell us is that the separation, the temporary separation, gives us a better perspective. No? Because sometimes we are so much engrossed in our experience and sometimes we have to take a step back to be separated from our loved ones so that we can begin to see them in a different light and allow them to grow. Especially for parents, no? They have a difficult part time letting go of their parents, no? Of the parents of their children. Mga 30 years old na, ayaw nyo pa mag let go sa kanyang mga anak, no? But sometimes you just have to go through the pain of separation so that you will begin to realize that your child is never is not anymore a child but is grown mature and that you are invited to to relate with them in a different way or sometimes we have a difficult time letting go of a loved one who is about to die or who has died but it we believe in our faith that death death is not the end of life but only life changes the way we they live changes so they continue to live on and we are invited to relate with them in a different way. So separation is a good thing. That is what Ron Rollheiser tries to tell us because it brings our love and our relationship to a higher level. And so for your assignment, maybe you can go back and see you know, what relationship are you, you do you have a difficult time letting go of. And you ask for the grace of the risen Christ, the ascended Christ, that that is also the invitation of Christ. I am physically absent so that you can relate with me in a deeper way. And the same thing is true, that to let go of somebody, to be separated with somebody so that you can relate with that person in a deeper way.